but it used to get to me. So that is so unfair. I put all this work in and all you had to say is, why well, I stopped going to the gym? So I punched them. I didn't punch them. Simon Miller, the bald asshole here. Welcome once again. Wearing the coolest top ever today. It says, if I die lifting weights, add more weight and call the cops. There was that one guy last time all this went, you wouldn't call the cops, you'd call the ambulance. And I was like, you need to get out, my friend, and probably enjoy the sunlight. Uh, thanks again, everyone who's watched the content the last few days. Massively appreciate you all. And this video kind of came from the diet video we did last week. If you go back to last week, I think Wednesday, Thursday, something like that. I walked you through everything I ate in a day because people kept asking and I will always give you what I want. And as I was separating egg whites, I was like, wow, I'm really good at separating egg whites, even though I'm not. There was a bunch of rogue yolks. But I was like, there's a bunch of other stuff that you actually do get good at both sort of mentally and physically, when you do bodybuild, lift weights, go to the gym. I thought, we can talk about that here on the channel. So yeah, no word of a lie. If you are going to the gym and you're getting fit and you're doing all this stuff, here's seven things you're actually better at, even if you don't know it. Number seven is exactly that, separating egg whites. Why am I good at separating egg whites? And the other reason I wanted to mention this is on the video last week, everyone's like, why don't you just get egg whites in a, in a tub? I do. I have a bit of both because for some reason, call me crazy, call me, oh, what a crazy, crazy person. The eggs, like normal eggs, just taste nicer than egg whites from a pack to me. They just do. So I have both. I've worked out the costings. They cost exactly the same, which is actually something else that bodybuilding gets you good at. Because you're weighing all your food all the time, well, I found this anyway, you get damn good at maths. I can now just look at that sort of 100 grams uh, nutrition on the back. My brain just goes, boop, boop, boop. I say this all the time. If only that's what school would have been. I wasn't terrible at maths and science, but I was okay. But if science had been about how the human body works from a muscular point of view, or maths had been about <laughs> add up nutritional content, I would have flipping loved it. I am better now at all that stuff than I was when I was a child. I could walk in there and smash all those things. But it's true. I can now separate an egg white. And I remember when I first started doing it, not that it was a problem, but I was rubbish at it. All the yolks were going everywhere and my fat count was really high. And I was like, oh, it's the worst thing ever, even though it's not a problem at all. But there you go. And number six, you all have done it. You know this. I'll put it into two categories. It's either good at opening jars. Everyone always go, oh, Dave. Dave could open the jar because he's got the big muscles. Or helping your friends move house. How many times do you get that? I remember when I was back uh, as employed. I won't say the name of the company just in case. And they were doing a big revamp. And you weren't supposed to get the employees involved. Again, it was an office move. And I was just like a writer on a magazine. And they went, oh, Miller, can you come in and, and move all these, these big heavy bookcases and stuff? Because you like lift weights. Like, what are you talking about? That's not fair. Do you get the smart guy in to do your finances at the end of the year? No, you don't. So why do I have to come in and do it? It always used to irk me, as you can probably see. But it does mean you're better at opening jars. Like, I eat a lot of pickles. And I see some people, I mean, I don't ever see this because when would I ever watch somebody opening a jar of pickles? But I see some people in the hypothetical sense going like, like having some kind of aneurysm and they can't do it. I walk over, I can smash open that pickle jar straight away. There is the other side to this too, the detriment, which is that sometimes you can't do it. And then in this person's eyes, who you've now failed, they're like, well, what good are you? I thought you went to the gym to be strong. I was like, well, I'm trying, man. Why, why have you got to knock me down? So like when, when you lose weight, right? When you're trying to get ripped. I remember this. I got ripped from my bodybuilding competition. I had a low body fat percentage. I, I don't know when it was. Probably somewhere in between six and eight, seven. I don't know, some percent. I should have got lower, I know. And then when I was walking around in clothes, it was like, Miller, you start lifting weights. Why, why are you look smaller than you did? And I was like, Miller Hubbard, and I'm not the type of guy that just whips his top off. I'm like, look at these. Look at, these, look at these washboard abs. But it used to get to me. So that is so unfair. I put all this work in and all you had to say is, why well, I stopped going to the gym? So I punched them. I didn't punch them. Right, on to the more serious now stuff now, or at least the more interesting stuff. Number five is that apparently, and there are studies, I've read about them, it's quite fascinating. If you go to the gym, where obviously you're teaching your muscles to be better, I suppose. I mean, that's the official term. You will then uh, improve the amount you have to pee at night. Or what I should say is you're better at holding in your wee, holding in your urine when you are getting your, your, your eight hours worth of sleep or whatever it is that you get. If only I got eight hours, it would be like a dream, the irony. But yeah, that's true. I suppose it's because maybe you're working on your core and then that ties into your bladder as well. I need to do more research about this. I've only sort of touched the surface on it at the moment. But isn't that amazing? If you go to the gym, you won't, I mean, you're not going to pee yourself regardless, but sometimes, you know, some people have to get up, you know, throughout the night to go to the toilet and you will have to do it less. I think that's a massive plus because the more uninterrupted sleep you can get, 
the better you're going to progress, right? Because you'll be recovering better and your muscles will be able to good to go again and get a smashing in the gym. So it actually does have some benefits. The fact you're training and you need to recover, you can recover better because you don't need to up and go to the loo. A bit of gibberish in there, blah, 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 blah. But I just, I love that kind of stuff. I do. Why anybody's conducting these studies, I don't know, but I'm happy they are. Now you know. And also maybe if you are getting up two or three times to go to the loo, it means you're not training hard enough. Not true. It probably means you need to go to the doctor unless you're like 50 year old plus you shouldn't be waking up that much in the night other of course you drank a bunch of water number four is fascinating and it's kind of a weird way to phrase it but i wanted to put it in here and you will get better at having bad teeth <laughs> that's not positive by any stretch of the imagination but again study science you should read this stuff it's really interesting when you work out your level of saliva decreases and because of that your body then sort of produces more alkaline i guess to try and get the saliva going and alkaline is no good for your teeth so you will wear them out quicker. How much does that suck, right? You don't want that. It mostly boasts the risk of cavities too. And this kind of makes sense to me. Like my teeth touch wood have always been okay. But every now, I never had a cavity either. But sometimes when I go to the gym, the, uh, sorry, to the gym, when I go to the dentist, they are perplexed. They're like, do you drink fizzy drinks? I'm like, no, not really. Do you drink coffee? No, not really. Do you have many sugary treats? I'm like, no, not really. Like, we don't understand it. And I think it's because of that. Because again, my saliva levels are decreasing. It's pushing my alkaline levels up. And it's just sort of, you know, banging away at my teeth a little bit. The other point is, this is more about sort of doing combat sports, obviously. If you're doing boxing or MMA or, or working out to a certain degree wrestling, because you grit your teeth or because you're just getting smacked in them, that can wear them out as well, which obviously which obviously isn't going to help. But yeah, isn't the body nuts? I don't know why you stop creating as much saliva. But again, we're humans. When you actually think about what a human is, the most terrifying thing ever. I don't want to get into too hippy trippy stuff. But the fact you can get a man and a woman and they can have sex and another baby just pops out. What is that? Number three is a good one. You'll be pleased with this. It makes you live longer. Again, going back to science, where they say this was more about people that did uh, running, but it's still cardiovascular health. I know weight training isn't as, as good as for stuff like that, but it still is doing that. And yeah, people that ran or did regular exercise in the studies lived for three years longer than everybody else. Now, the problem here is that if you are the only gym buddy in your friend group and you all get to 80, and nine of them die. <laughs> and you're like, well, great. Now I've got three more, <laughs> I've got three more years to wait before I, I hit the bricks too. And now I haven't got any friends. However, you still feel good that you're able to prolong your life. I just think it's a cool thing, right? And being fit and being healthy is obviously important. Sometimes people go nuts in the comments when I say this. I'm not going to push it on anybody because I, I don't think it works. But B, I think you've got to make the choice for yourself. I will throw out my advice and hopefully be motivational to a certain extent. But if you don't want to do it, you, you, you don't have to do it. However, that's a massive benefit of it. And then some people go, oh, yeah, but you train too hard, you're going to wear your heart out. Well, that could happen too, but I'm going to guess you probably are already predisposition to having heart disease. End of the day, if you're running, you're doing some kind of exercise, you're doing this, you're doing that. When you do get to the older age, you may smash out an extra three years. That, to me, sounds pretty good. Number two is you'll have a badass memory. You'll remember things. Again, going back to the studies. But they did this bunch of tests, and it turns out people that were working out and people that were lifting weights, especially right after they had lifted weights or done some form of exercise, remembered 10% of images that were shown and then taken away than people that weren't training and weren't working out. So you're increasing your brain power. I'm going to suppose this because when you go to the gym, you're focused, you're ready, your adrenaline is up, you're doing all of these things, and it makes you more alert and it puts you on the ball. Now, the only time this is really ever going to be great for you is if you're doing the generation game, if you remember that. Desk lamp, a can-can dancer, a toweling rogue. Or when you're playing one of those kid games. Remember you got all the cards and you flip over one and it's like a teddy bear and you flip over another and it's a cup. And then you flip over another, it's a teddy bear, and you have to remember where the original teddy bear is. It's a great game, timeless classic. You'll be really good at that, meaning you can beat kids at games they're meant to love, and you'll teach them a lesson about life. I am, of course, joking. Do not, do not take me seriously. But these things all sound great to me. Live longer. Sweet. Better memory. Sweet. Don't have to get up at night to piss. Sweet. Awful teeth. Not as sweet. But again, life's all about balance, as is bodybuilding and lifting weights. So really, it's just teaching you more lessons. And the number one thing you will be really good at, although I rephrase here to it be you will be better at, is having self-confidence and having more self-worth. It's a kind of a double, uh, double-edged sword because... You know, when you have a bad day and you think you look a bit fat or you're not happy with your, your progress, that gets up, that upsets you. But most of the time, because of the releasing of endorphins and just how good lifting weights make you feel, 
it will improve your life. It's as simple as that. And that's why, that's the best thing about it. You know, the ego thing is fine and, you know, you, you enjoy the way you look. But when you start feeling better because you're working out, especially when you start to lose fat, 100% of pe people feel better if they're overweight and then get to the weight they're meant to be. And what is better than that, really? Like, that's why I like to, to talk about fitness as much as I do. I think in it, it can improve people's lives. It can get rid of depression. It can make people happier. It can sort of calm down anxiety. It can do all these great mental health um, things, for lack of a better term. And you don't really see that as much in the fitness community. It's more like, get abs, be strong, biceps, and everything like that, which is great. I love all of that, and I, and I buy into it. But it would just be great if we talked about the, the, the mental pluses as well. And you will get mental pluses. It means you'll be a better person. You'll be more good at being a human being in your own life. And ain't nothing more important than that. There you go. Seven things that lifting weights makes you really good at. You probably had no idea. I didn't. But I had this one idea and I started reading about it like this is fascinating. Like the video, share the video, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell button, ding ding, so you know what's going on. I got a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Simon316. You can get a bunch of rewards like t shirts and whatnot. What else do you do? At Simon316 on Twitter, Instagram. All of this is in the description below. And I got merch coming out soon. Information when I have it. See you soon.